Hello. Hello, everyone. Let me get on Instagram. Trying something new today. Good morning. Welcome. Happy and blessed Thursday. Welcome to Thriver Thursday Live, the place to be to learn powerful scaling strategies and grow in your walk with the Lord. I'm just so excited. We are trying something new today, streaming on several platforms through StreamYard. I'm on my Facebook business page, my Joyful Scaling uh, Facebook group. If you're not there, please get in there. Over 3,000 like-minded women who love the Lord and are killing it in business and getting to that next level. That's the goal, as well as on YouTube. I am live on YouTube. I've never even done that before. So welcome, welcome. In order for me to see your comments, uh, I really need you to accept um, kind of uh, your ability to be seen by StreamYard. So I think you go to StreamYard.com slash uh, Facebook and maybe slash YouTube. Who knows? Tony is here. How are you? She asked me, how was the interview? Great question. I want to talk about that. Thank you, Tony. I'm so glad you're here. Um, well, before I get to that, you're going to love today's training. Usually I come to you teaching what actions I want you to take to move the needle in your business, right? Well, today is completely different because I'm going to teach you what not to do, which can be just as important, okay? Because today's topic is five things I stopped doing. I stopped doing to take my business to a whole new level. And when I say new level, I'm talking about dramatic five-figure and six-figure jumps in revenue, okay? So let me tell you this right out of the gate. Some of these things I'm going to share with you today, you probably heard before. And your knee-jerk reaction may be to dismiss them out of hand. Like, yeah, they're small things. They don't really matter. Let me assure you, small things do matter. Your mindset, critically important, right? Your actions matter. Your beliefs matter. Everything matters. And by the way, I'm going to share eight, not five. So grab your pen and paper. You're going to want to take notes. And most importantly, I want you to take action. So commit with me today that you're going to stop each and every one of these things. Okay. All right. Are you excited? All right. Now, Tony asked about uh, how my interview went. Did you catch my first ever TV appearance? I was so blessed to be a guest on a local lifestyle show. Number one here in the Charleston area called Low Country Live with my beautiful friend, Erin Keenzel. She's one of the hosts. And I spoke about something, you know, I'm passionate about how extraordinary you are right? Specifically, why women are perfectly positioned to be extraordinary entrepreneurs. And I firmly believe that with all of my being, right? On the show, I shared the number one stumbling block for us ladies and how to overcome it. The three key strategies every business needs to succeed. I know one's going to surprise you or one definitely is off the radar. And some quick tips on what to do differently to see dramatically different results in your bottom line. And I have a free resource, a brand new one. It's a 20 page guide. I call it the ultimate scaling guide for proven strategies for exponential growth. Check out my new website, which is still under construction, but you can grab the download for free. It's at judyweber.co. Okay. So about the TV show, if you didn't see it, you can watch it on my jo Joyful Scaling YouTube channel. Some of you might be on that right now on my business page, or you can listen on the go because we ladies love to multitask, right? On my podcast, episode 188. Oh, and in case you missed it, okay, the She is Extraordinary podcast has changed names. I'm in the midst of a rebrand, you may have noticed. So it is now called the Joyful Scaling Podcast. So as I up-level my business, the podcast will remain, of course, Jesus-focused. And more than that, it's Jesus-fueled. My faith in Christ fuels me forward to pursue the impossible and to fulfill my life's purpose before the Lord, right? And I'm going to continue covering life and business issues that matter to go-getter, high-achieving women of the Lord, Jesus Christ, like you and me. OK, but the business topics are going to be catered to women who have reached a certain level of success in their business, six figures or approaching six figures. And they're looking to scale. They're looking to step into that true visionary CEO role and it, what I call a sophisticated business model. OK, and that is one that allows you to make more impact, have more influence in the world. Right. And especially in your market. And of course, generate more impact. So when I say impact and more income. I'm not talking about just revenue. Revenue is a great thing, but it's about the profit. It's about the net income. Okay. And I wanted you to do it all 
that in a way that's joyful, right? And allows you to reclaim your time. It's a true legacy business that I'm talking about. So um, besides that, on the Joyful Scaling Podcast, I also am going to address issues specific to people like me who used to be in corporate and other professional women, okay? Like lawyers, doctors, architects, accountants, right? Because I know many of you have been thinking about transitioning from what you're doing today to entrepreneurship. You've got the expertise, you've got the experience, you think at that high level, you can do this, my friend. You can streamline success in your business and I'm here to help you do that, okay? So before we dive into the eight things I stopped doing that took my business to a new level, let's go to our Heavenly Father to pray and then we'll dive on in, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you that this technology seems to be working. You know, I'm not a techie person, Lord, but I, and to me, actually, tech is kind of a necessary evil. Um, I love it and I hate it at the same time. And I know I'm not alone in that. But thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for how you allowed this technology to be so that I could have clients in Australia and in South Africa and in France and in London and in California and all over the world in Canada. And here I am in Charleston. Lord, thank you for bringing these beautiful ladies here, whether they're watching live with me or on the replay. I ask you to quicken their hearts and minds to the message you have for them through me today. We love you and we trust you, God. Help us to love and trust you more. In the mighty name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. If you haven't yet commented, I would love to see comments pop up here. So, all right, well, let's jump in. The eight things you need to stop doing. Okay. First one procrastination. You got to stop procrastinating. Okay. Tomorrow never comes. So I, I, I used to say these things and I know some of you are saying this still at the end of a day, you might say, Oh, I'm tired. I'll do that tomorrow. I know that was, you know, in my calendar to do, but I'll do it tomorrow or, Oh golly, another day. And I didn't get to whatever project, right? whatever task was in your calendar, okay? I also hear you say, well, one day I'll get my desk in order. One day I'll get my files in order. Does any of that sound familiar? I'd like to see the comments light up on that one because I know it is. I've been there. You know, there's an adage that's as old as the hills, but it's still important to remember. And that is don't put off till tomorrow what can be done today, right? And here's what I recommend. There is so much goodness that can be done if you take an extra five, 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the day to clear your desk. Respond to that PM or DM. Get back on that email. Do your follow up, right? Don't wait until tomorrow. If you wait until the next morning, you might forget, okay? So don't procrastinate. That is the stop doing this number one, okay? Will you commit with me? You're not gonna procrastinate anymore. All right. Number two on what not to do. I need you to stop apologizing. I need you to stop apologizing. And I'm going to give you some examples. So again, get that pen ready. Okay. We should apologize when we do something wrong. But in my experience, and again, I'm right there with you. Why do those words, I'm sorry, seem to flow so easily from our mouth? Now, don't get me wrong. We need to be kind, right? We should love to be kind because Christ is who we are and he is love, right? But what I'm saying is don't apologize for nothing. So instead of saying sorry, maybe say, excuse me, pardon me. Oh, go ahead. After you, your turn, right? Right? You're like, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're not sorry. Excuse me. Oh, go ahead. This may seem subtle, but when you say, I'm sorry, you're putting yourself in a weaker position. And why? Like, why do we have to take on everything? Is this resonating? Okay. How about this one? Instead of saying, oh, sorry to interrupt, say, oh, I'd like to add, or I have an idea. Okay. How about this? Instead of saying, oh, sorry to complain, don't say that. You're not complaining. You're probably bringing an issue up that needs to be addressed. So say, thank you for listening. How about this? Instead of apologizing in an email, consider saying one of these things. Oh, thank you for catching that. If someone says, you know, it's so funny. There are people out there 
women and men, but you know, I only work exclusively with women who will say, Oh, I saw that, uh, you know, I saw that error in your email. And sometimes you're like, are you kidding me? Did you read it? There's substance there. Did you catch it? No, they may not have caught that, but they caught the error. So that's okay. Don't just let it, just let it roll off your back. Say, thank you for catching that. Or I appreciate you bringing that error to my attention. Don't say sorry. Okay. How about this? If you're running a little late and then you get to a meeting, instead of saying sorry, consider saying, oh, thank you for waiting for me. Okay. Stop apologizing. Okay. Number three, stop overthinking. Stop overthinking. Okay. Now, you know, my genius is strategizing. So that requires think work. That is critical to developing sound, effective, powerful strategy. But when the think work extends beyond hours or days and goes into weeks and months, oh no, that's overthinking. And I'm seeing some Facebook users, I, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are, saying, I overthink all the time. You're not alone, but today's the day, right? Let's talk a little bit about the reasons for overthinking. Doubting yourself. Ooh, I'm not sure. Let me think that over, you know, or a lack of confidence, which at the end of the day is really about fear. But see, ladies, you get to decide. You get to choose. Am I going to doubt or am I moving forward? Am I going to fear or am I going to exercise my faith? And you know the right answer, right? That's the easy part. I know the answer. The hard part is actually living out your faith. And I'm right there with you, right? Every day, you every every hour, Lord Jesus, please let me let me have a new influx of your Holy Spirit so that I can walk in truth, right? And to walk in faith. But as you step out, even in fear, okay? Cuz we're not going to be fearless. I hear that all the time. Be fearless, be fearless. No, no, no. Be courageous. Walk in faith. Fear will be there. That's why God said so many times, don't fear. He knew that would be an emotion that comes up. But we can take action despite the fear. And that's what I'm talking about. Because when you step out and you get things done, even if you doubt, and even if you're not sure and you're afraid, if you step out, take action without overthinking, okay, and you do things that you thought maybe that you would never do, like going on television, okay, when you do that the first time, doing it again and again becomes easier and easier. Because here's the truth. You know more than you think you know. And what you don't know, you can find the answer because you're smart. You're stronger than you think you are and you're better than you think you are. You know why? Because of whose you are. You're a daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? You're a daughter of the Lord God Almighty, our Heavenly Father. So remember, don't ground your confidence in you. It's not in you. It's in Christ who made you, who was perfect, who knows everything and who promised to equip you so that you can fulfill his purpose for your life. Oh, hi, Katie. So glad you're here, hon. So look, I need you to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I need you to live out your faith. Hashtag no fear. Okay. On to number four, what you got to stop doing. You've got to stop trying to figure everything out on your own. Knock it off. First, ask God. He is wisdom. Hallelujah. Okay. We, we know this, right? Let's act on our faith. God knows everything. Nothing's impossible for him. Nothing's hard for him. So go to him. And you know, Jesus said, come to me, come to me so many times, including Matthew 11. I encourage you to read that today. OK, so stop trying to figure things out on your own. First, ask God. Second, ask others for help, especially other sisters in Christ who share your same values and allegiance to the Lord. This life is not meant to be a solo journey. Right. Remember in Genesis, it is not good that man should be alone. It's not just man and woman. It's people. God knew we needed community. And one Bible verse that makes this point really good is, I think, Hebrews 10, 25. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Ladies, the day is approaching. 
we need to come together in church and here in beautiful communities like this, like my joyful scaling Facebook group. Okay. Stop trying to figure it out on your own. We're up to number five of the things you need to stop doing. And on this one, we need, this is, they're all so important. I just get kind of crazy passionate about this. We need to stop letting the negative rule your brain. Don't talk ugly about yourself to yourself. You're a daughter of the king. Why do we say things to ourselves in our head? In language, we would never, ever let somebody else get away with. And I love it, Katie saying, I am choosing to walk out my faith and moving out of my comfort zone. I'm moving forward. No excuses. Beautiful, sister. Beautiful. May that be a commitment we all make today. Now, on this point about saying ugly things to ourselves, we would never allow someone to call our daughter, our sister, our neighbor, our friend, our mother, the things that we call ourselves. Let's be real about this. Ugly, fat, stupid, too young, too old, too whatever. Am I right? We need to stop. In love, I'm imploring you to stop because that's not how the Lord sees you. Proverbs 31 tells you what you are worth. God sees you as more precious than rubies. And think about how gracious Jesus was as he interacted with women at every turn, including woman, the woman at the well, right? Including the woman who was to be stoned. Be kind to yourself. Stop telling yourself lies. Don't let the enemy win, okay? Now I have a couple of bonus stops, right? Because I said we're going to have eight. Okay, six. Stop downloading every freebie. I want you to download mine. But I mean, there are some of you that I know. I, I know because I used to do this years ago. When you're scrolling through Instagram, you're scrolling through Facebook. Ooh, grab my this, grab my that. You're over on YouTube watching a thing. Oh, download this, download that. You're spending so much time downloading freebies. You got to make your own. Yes, I want you to uh, take some time to look at your competitors and even people outside your market to get ideas of what you might be able to do, right? But desperately filling out opt-in forms and feeling like I'm missing out. Or you need to see, oh, I just need one more example of how to set that up, uh, how to do that, of topics, okay? Listen, sister, you are an expert. And if you're not, you shouldn't be in business, okay? You are an expert. Have faith and confidence, again, in who you are in Christ and ask him, this is amazing, write this down, ask the Lord to give you inspiration to create an amazing resource, one that is different than what anybody else in your industry is putting out, okay? Something that will literally put you on the map. You can do it, especially if we rely on the Lord because he's super smart. Nothing's hard for him, right? He's done it for me. Remember, you are a leader and I want you to own that because that's the truth. Okay. All right. What you have to do, stop doing rather, number seven, stop checking your emails all the time. How many are guilty of this? I used to do this all the time. I hear a bing, 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 whether it's Facebook, it's email, and you respond to notifications like this. Oh, I'm going to prove that I am very responsive and, you know, I don't want to miss anything. Hold on a second, ladies. You have a calendar and I hope you've filled it out. You should time block every hour so that you know what you're doing. I need you to stay on task and honor those time blocks in your calendar. Because here's the deal. You're a CEO. You get to decide your schedule. Don't allow anything to pull you off of that strategic. There's that word again. You're going to hear that word a lot because it's not talked about enough in business and it's critical. You can't allow anything to pull you off of that strategic, well thought out plan that you've created for yourself. Okay, so we're going to stop it. And finally, I need you to stop doing anything other than deciding that you are a success. Stop thinking you're anything but a success, no matter where you are in your journey, okay? Whether you're just getting started, 
whether you've you know, been at this for a while and you've reached that six figure mark or close to it and you kind of feel like you've reached a ceiling, decide you are a success and stop doubting that and stop telling yourself, I'll never get there and all this negative. No, decide my sister that you are a success and you can do anything because it's true. You know, a couple of months ago, I uh, revealed kind of a hashtag that I'm so passionate about because this is a movement that I that I want to lead. And it is pursue the impossible. Pursue the impossible. Nothing's impossible for Christ. Nothing is impossible for the Lord God Almighty. And because you are his daughter, because you are following his plan and purpose for your life, and because you are seeking his guidance and wisdom all the way, and because he has promised that where he has called you, he will equip you. Hallelujah. Success is yours. It's a done deal. Please type it in. Success is mine. It is a done deal. By the grace of the Lord. Okay. Now, granted, success is a journey. And I believe it's one you never really complete. When you reach one level of success, us high achievers, we go getters, we want to reach to that next level, right? Of course, I'm never satisfied. I mean, I'm, I'm content and I'm grateful, but you know, God gave us ambition. God gave us, you know, big plans to impact the world. We want to help as many people as possible. So we're, you know, success is this journey. But I know for myself and for my clients that success starts with you deciding that you are one right now. Okay. So as we wrap up, what questions do you have, ladies? I have a few minutes, so pop in. I know where you're watching, you're a bit delayed. But listen, I want you to tell me which of these eight things that I'm asking you to stop, which of those stood out the most to you? Which one tends to trip you up the most? And which of those are you committed to stopping today? I'd love you to put it in the comments. And why? It's not really for me. It's for you. Because study after study has shown that when you put it out there in public, here is what I'm committed to. When you write it down, you are oodles and oodles more likely. How's that for a technical word? You're oodles and oodles more likely to actually do what you said you were going to do. Write it down. Make that commitment. You know, I encourage you to spend time with the Lord today. And... Um, Ask him to download all of his wisdom that you need for today. He's going to give you everything you need today. He's promised that. And we need, I think, as, as high achieving women who want to achieve big things in business, and that includes impact, influence, and income, we need to stop apologizing that we are Christian. We need to stop feeling like I can't be that six-figure, multi-six-figure, or even seven or eight-figure entrepreneur if I am a good Christian. I can't judge anyone's walk. You can't judge mine, right? We're called not to do that, okay? But I can tell you this. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, and I am following him. I am doing the best that I can in following him and surrendering everything I am and everything this business is to him. And I'm not going to apologize for that. Now, my brand, Jesus is right there, outward facing. Maybe in your brand, it's not outward facing. But because of who you are, I never want you to feel that, you know, oh, it must be selfish ambition if I'm being ambitious. No, no, no. Here's what I know. And then this took years for me to realize that in certain people like me, maybe like you, God makes us a certain way where the ambition is just there. Like, look, we ooze it. Like, we just love a challenge. And we have these big dreams. Not everybody has big, big dreams to impact the world. But if you do, don't apologize for that. I guess that's number nine. Okay. So uh, Katie says, overthinking, realizing I don't have to be perfect. Just do it. That was her biggest takeaway. Awesome. Awesome. And over here on Instagram, Renee says, research to figure out how best to do something. 
just do the videos or social media content. Yes, sister. Oh my goodness. Renee, you are an amazing realtor. You've been doing this long enough. You know what you're doing, sister. You don't have to second guess yourself. Now, look, I have like bullet points that I've been following today. I don't wing this. I don't encourage anybody to wing this. Sometimes I do it for a shorter one. But on these more, you know, weekly dedicated trainings, you do the research, you put the bullet points there, and then you hit that go button. And there might be a little bit of excitement in there, a little bit of nerves. If you didn't have a little bit of nerves, then I don't think you care. So that's a good thing, okay? You're so welcome. All right, ladies. So listen, as we wrap up, please do not forget to grab my free resource, The Ultimate Scaling Guide at judyweber.co, judyweber.co. It's a 20 page document. There's some prompts there to help you walk through and um, really apply these principles that are so important to really achieving what you want to do in your business to get to that next level. So thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, let me know how I can help you. And again, if you are not in my Joyful Scaling Facebook group, please join us over there. All right, ladies, love you so much. God bless you. Have a beautiful rest of your day.